Okay, this is uh, for Astronomy 320. This is uh, June 24th, 2020, and this is a continuation on Chapter 3. So, we covered the first two, basically. They, those were about Kepler and, and um, Brahe and, and um, Copernicus. So now we get to Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation, that's Section 3.3 in the book. Okay, over here, I have uh, we've got this in student view. I've got this in student view. So right now, I have this PowerPoint slide up. Okay, the newest one, and I'm not going to add to this one. Okay, so this one's set. I also have we skip chapter four because that's about the solar system more. We want to get into the stars as soon as possible. But we need the stuff that's in chapter five to understand what, what we're going to be seeing in the in the remaining chapters. So. That, this is a work in progress. If you download this now, make sure you go back and download it again. Okay, I'll tell you on another video. But this is a work in progress. So is this. I've already uploaded the this guy here. So you can download this guy here as well. But this guy, it says up here, this is a work in progress. The final version should be uploaded to Canvas by Friday, June 26, 2020. So if you, upload it, if you download it now, it's going to be an earlier version and you want to make sure you download it and I'll send out an email and all that good stuff um, also I want to say sorry I think on an earlier video I had the TV on in the background I didn't even notice it was one of those deals where I <clears throat> wanted to do something but I had to wait till another video uploaded and then when it finally uploaded and I came back to do it I had the TV on the in the background didn't even notice it so um, anyway so there's that and then this We'll cover what's going to be on quiz three but remember this is not the completed version yet we'll probably get some chapter five stuff in here down here and i'll probably go over that tomorrow but on friday i'll probably release a video or upload a video where we go over and answer all these questions okay so probably two more videos after this one this week okay let's get back to the all right so i want to go to this guy so you see this is where we were last time we were on this one right here conservation of angular momentum we talked about that now we want to get to Newton's universal law of gravitation so when you jump up something pulls you back down okay when the stem breaks the apple falls to the ground what is the force that is always pulling pulling down pulling not pushing but pulling this is a force known as gravity and it was it was associated only with the earth so ancient times everybody knew things fell back down fall back down and they and that got the word gravity okay but people only associated it with the earth they didn't think that other things also did that but Newton's great intellectual leap was to consider the possibility that gravity was not just associated to the earth or with the earth but may in fact extend should be extend man I'm finding all these errors I just I just wrote this like two hours ago extend it should be extend throughout space and that other objects such as the sun may exert gravitational force on objects such as the earth so there's the sun and there's a gravitational force on the earth due to the sun now why doesn't the earth just fly off straight okay this cannonball up here once you shoot it it would love to just keep going and going and going in a straight line Newton's first law things want to keep doing what they're already doing but it's got a net external force on it so you put some gunpowder in here you shoot it off and it goes put some more gunpowder in here give it a greater velocity and it goes just a tad further so then finally you put enough gunpowder into it boom you've sent your cannonball into orbit around the earth so we got to get above the atmosphere for that to happen and we got to you know it's got to be above the atmosphere for us to be in orbit otherwise the atmosphere re friction will slow it down and it'll fall to the earth but if you could shoot it uh, above the atmosphere not enough velocity it falls to the earth a little bit more velocity initial velocity falls to the earth give it enough initial velocity and it'll go into orbit around the earth the cannonball wants to do that okay the earth wants to go like that but it's this pull to the sun that keeps it in orbit around the sun just like the cannonball could stay in orbit around the earth okay Newton's so uh, Newton's great intellectual leap was to consider that possibly the gravity was not just associated to the earth but in fact may in fact extend through okay we just read that because I saw that error again all right so uh, the sun makes or gravitational force of objects such as the earth so U Newton's universal law of gravitation. So 
you've got G is the universal gravitational constant. That's what it is right there. It's just a constant. So you always plug the same number in right there. Okay, M1 is the mass of object 1. It's going to be in kilograms. I forgot to include that. M2 is going to be the mass of object 2. Okay, and then that's going to be in kilograms. The distance between the objects, that's R, okay, it is squared, notice, that's going to be in meters. And the gravitational force between objects falls off quickly as, as oops, quickly of increases in distance. Okay, that's not worded right. Um, I may upload this again, so you may want to try to upload this. I'm just going to make a few little, little changes to the grammar. If you double the distance between two objects, the force between them is reduced to one quarter of what it was. Okay, so if you, so we'll, we'll run into that. We'll, I'll have a, I have a better thing coming up for that later. The fact and theory of gravity. Gravity is a fact. The moon looks beautiful. You decide to take a trip to the moon. You jump up hoping, you jump hoping to fly to the moon. The moon grabs you and pulls you back down. Okay. This is a, ver a verifiable observation because you can easily test it over and over anytime you want. That's what science loves. Okay, this is a very simple verifiable observation, but the point is you got to be able to see the same result over and over and over again. If you see a different result one time, then you got to go back and figure out why did you get the different result. But you jump up, you fall back down. You send a, a rocket up, well, why did you get a different result? They didn't fall back down. Well, because you put a lot of... Of, of fuel in that thing gave it a lot of upward force and allowed it to accelerate upwards. But how do we explain what gravity is? How do we obtain a theory explaining gravity? Aristotle said gravity is an inherent property of heavy objects and heavier objects would fall to the ground faster than lighter weight objects. Well that's not right. This would be a ver ver verifiable observation and Gal Galileo verified that it was not true. It was an observation, but it's not true. You've got to have a verifiable observation. Verifiable. That's where Aristotle failed. Verifiable. Right here. Verifiable observation. And this right here, they didn't verify it. They never tried it, apparently. Newton's theory of gravity. Every mass attracts every other mass through the force called gravity. The strength of the gravitational force attracting any two objects is directly proportional to the product of these masses. The strength of gravity between two objects decreases with the square of the distance between their centers. Okay. So, Newton's universal law of gravitation, the gravitational force between two objects is directly proportional to the product of their masses, m1 times m2. It is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So, there, there's that equation again. That's Newton's universal law, law of gravitation equation. Then you've got what the uh, universal gravitational constant is again. So, basically, so the gravitational force goes as m1 squared, m1 times m2 divided by r squared. We drop the g because the g is just a constant. These are the, the variables right here. The mass of object 1, the mass of object 2, and the distance between them. That's the, Those are the three variables. So, fg, f gravitational force, goes as m1 times m2, not an equal, I didn't have an equal sign. You got to put the g back in if you want to put equals there. So it goes as m1 times m2 divided by r squared. Start with m1 being 1 kilogram, let's start easy, m2 being 1 kilogram, and r equals 1 meter. So we would end up with a, like 1 newton of force. That's what that would be, 1 newton of force. If we double m1, now we get 2 kilograms times 1 kilogram divided by 1 meter squared, we get 2 newtons. So by doubling one of these guys, or whatever you do to them, that's what you're going to do to the answer. If you made one 10, kept the other one 1, then the answer would be 10 times what it was. Okay? Now, what happens if we mess around with R? If we mess around with R, we'll look at this. It's 1 kilogram times 1 kilogram is going to be 1 on top. But you got 2. You went from 1 to 2. Okay, so as a result, you go down to 2 squared, that's 4. So you went down to a quarter of what you were. So just by doubling the distance, the force falls off to one quarter of what it was. And then if you triple R, that's three squared, you go down to one ninth of what it was. So it falls off quickly. That's that graph I had up here. See, it's falling off rather quickly. As R increases, we don't have a nice linear function. It doesn't go straight down. It goes like this. And notice that 
R is never going to be infinity, right? So that means that the gravitational force never goes completely to zero. That means that a planet in the Andromeda galaxy is applying a force to Earth. But if we went and calculated it, we'd probably find it to be like 0 0.0000000000. .000000000. I'd have to say zero all weekend probably, zero, zero, zero. And finally I'd go one um, Newton. So it'd be incredibly small. It wouldn't be zero though, it wouldn't be exactly zero. Okay, where were we? We're here. And so, no, we did this. Hey, we can calculate the gravitational force the sun exerts on the earth. Okay, so the mass of the earth, by the way, if you're worried about this, I'm just doing this for the people who really like this kind of stuff. Some of you do, but here's the kind of question you would get. Uh, da, 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 gravitational force. All right, I missed it. Here it is. Looking at Newton's, so the one we just did. So to, what would happen to the force if we double the distance between them? What would happen if we triple the distance between them? That's the extent of the math, okay? Um, so what you're seeing here, don't panic. You're not going to be asked to redo this or anything like that. So the mass of the Earth, we, you guys don't have the, uh, the, the, the math prerequisites to do this, I don't think are required for this class, to be honest with you. So mass of the Earth, just, just for people who are interested, is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Remember we talked about scientific notation earlier on. Mass of the Sun, 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Okay, so as you can see, the Sun's huge. Uh, uh, about a thousand times more massive than the, than the Earth. Okay, the distance from the Sun to the Earth is 149.6 times 10 to the ninth. That's billion meters. So you know what a meter is? This is like way over a billion meters. Okay? It's more, that's kind of Donald Trump money, I think. So, gravitational force equals that equation there, and it got messed up here. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I should have went back and edited this. It got messed up, I guess. So anyway, it's going to be 3.54 times 10 to the 22nd Newtons. This would also be the same force the Earth exerts on the Sun. Remember Newton's third law? Third law says that for every force, there's an equal and oppositely directed force. In other words, one body exerts a force on the other body. The other body exerts an equal and opposite force on the first body. Uh, an apple, uh, uh, Earth exerts a uh, force on an apple. The apple exerts an equal but obsolete, direct, obsolete directed force on the Earth. On the, uh, on the Earth. So in this case, whatever the forces the Sun applies to the Earth, the Earth applies an equal in magnitude but opposite in direction force on the Sun. Newton's universal law of gravitation. Newton's universal law of gravitation explained Galileo's observation that objects with different masses would fall to the Earth at the same rate. It would also be used to explain Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Okay, I think, okay, wait, you're going to have, see, I told you this was a work in progress. In here someplace, you're going to have what, name, give examples of what Newton's universal law of gravitation helped explain. Okay, well, they're, they're right here. I've I got to add this right here. I'm not going to do it right now. I'll do it after I shut the video down. All right, so... Um, Newton's universal law of gravitation explained Galileo's observation that the objects with different masses would fall to the Earth at the same rate. Okay, we could show that using it if we were going to get into the math, but I don't want to lose half my class, so I'm not going to. It would, could also be used to explain Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Remember those three laws we went through? Okay, those were observations. Newton's explaining why, through the stuff you're looking at now, you may not be able to see it now. You've got to take more of the physics. I had to take I didn't understand stuff in lower division physics. It wasn't until I got into upper division physics where I said, oh, that's what this stuff is saying telling me. Oh, wow. So anyway, and then you've got Edwin H Hillary predicting the return of his comet. Edwin H H Haley, I'm sorry, e Edmund Haley. I think Edmund Hillary was the guy who first climbed Mount Everest. Edmund Haley, a friend of Newton's, observed a comet near the Earth in 1682. Using historical observations and Newton's universal law of gravitation, he, pre he predicted a return trip in, in 1758, 17, 76 years in the future, and it came back, okay? Haley died in 1742, so he wasn't alive to see it, but it got named after him, okay? And then this is just a, a joke. Basically, I took this from an earlier class where we had to talk about pseudoscience and people who are frauds and Sylvia Brown is like the ultimate fraud, so she's the person who said she could predict stuff and she couldn't and she ripped people off. 
Okay, and it was worse than that. She told people that her loved ones were dead when in fact their loved ones were still alive, but just being, had been kidnapped. Okay, Newton's universal law of gravitation. Because of these and many other successes, Newton's theory of gravitation uh, became widely accepted. It has been thoroughly tested and has, had met every challenge thrown at it thus far up until uh, we get into relativity. Okay, the, our book doesn't go into it, so I, did, I don't go into it. A book may go into it later, I don't know. Okay, here's Haley's Comet. Here's a YouTube video about Haley's Comet you can watch. Then Haley's Comet, okay, never mind this. Uh, oops. If you see this, don't get confused. I'm using slides that I used in fall 2019 when I taught this in the planetarium. I need to go through and delete those. It's probably a much, much more of them in here. In 1846, French astronomer Urbain Le Verrier noted discrepancies between the orbit of Uranus and prediction. In other words, Newton's laws predicted this is the orbit that Uranus, Uranus should be in. He used Newton's theory to predict the existence of an eighth planet. They then went looking for this eighth planet. This led to the discovery of Neptune. Okay, so then you got a YouTube video about universal law of gravitation you can watch here. And then that's it for the slides. Okay, so my plan is to put up so here is this one. This is I'm still working on this. Okay, I've already uploaded it, but but keep in mind that this is another work in progress. Why am I so close in? This is another work in progress. Oh, because I was changing something. I wanted to go in real close. So we we're skipping up to chapter five. Okay, and so this is a work in progress, and I and how much will be on your quiz depends on how much I do for the video tomorrow. If I don't do a video tomorrow, then uh, I guess we just covered everything that's going to be on your quiz. All right, um, and then so basically this just talks about fields and stuff like that. And so I'm going to try to make a video covering this tomorrow, and then I'll make a video on Friday that that we go through this, but with more questions on it than are there right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to add, add a question right here. Okay, I think that's everything. I've been having trouble with my email, so I apologize to people who have emailed me. Um, I've tried to go back earlier today and catch up. But uh, I don't know how successful I was. I have to open my email now in in, um, in Chrome. For some reason, it won't open in, in Firefox anymore. I don't know what happened. All right. So let me say good night, and hopefully, I'll have another video up for you to watch tomorrow.